The new Bose QuietComfort Ultra Earbuds and the newest AirPods Pro 2 are two of the best earbuds on the market. They rank number one and number two overall in the best active noise cancellation. They also have great sound, great features, and they command a premium price. So how do these two actually stack up and which one deserves a spot in your ears? Well, in this video, I'll break down the similarities and differences between these two earbuds in seven categories with actual test results to determine which is actually the better buy. So category number one is active noise cancellation, which for many people is the first question, which one blocks out more sound? Cause that's what Bose is really known for. And I ran several tests on here. The first one is just a basic magnitude test. I played a sound at a set distance away, the sound of a jet, and I turned that volume up until I could no longer block it out with the ANC on these earbuds. And as you can see here, we are blocking 65.2 decibels with the Bose, and 60.1 with the AirPods. But ANC is not one dimensional. It's not just how much sound you can block on a, on a plane because it's not just a plane. You'll have people talking, you have other things going on. So the second test I do is a general crowd test. And the AirPods actually came out a little bit ahead here, able to block 47.3 decibels while we're getting 47 decibels on the Bose. In general, I'd probably call that one a tie. The third test is the higher voice test. We're blocking 43 decibels with the Bose which means they're better than the 41 and a half decibels we were blocking with the AirPods Pro. And then the fourth test is the wind test to see how well the ANC handles strong wind, which a lot of earbuds out there accidentally amplify the wind and give you a very unpleasant experience outside. So for this test, I had a fan blowing on my face. I'm working on a way to quantify this for future videos, but subjectively, Bose did a good job here. AirPods did a decent job too, but Bose was slightly better but ultimately neither one is going to be bad in a windy environment. Now I should note that Bose has 11 levels between transparency and active noise cancellation, but you can never actually turn the ANC engine off. Like AirPods, you can put them in and have transparency, you can have ANC or you can have neither and it extends your battery. They both also have adaptive transparency with a decibel threshold. Bose has a slightly lower threshold. And what I mean by that is if you have transparency or a wear mode on, and somebody like slams the desk next to you, it's not gonna blow your ears out. It'll recognize that that is a high decibel sound and it won't play that through the earbud. So there's a limiter on there. And that kind of leads me into the comparison with transparency, which is honestly really good on both of these. Undoubtedly two industry leaders here. Uh, I think that if you have to really draw the differences between them, Bose is a little bit like hissier, a little bit more white noise there, but they're both super accurate and really easy to wear for hours and hours on end and uh, hold conversations, do whatever you have to do, they do a great job. And tying the whole first category together, the ANC is similar for crowd sounds and kind of similar for higher voices, but Bose is much more powerful when it comes to the lower droning sounds, which are ultimately very important. Like if you're on a jet, you wanna block a lot of that. So while the crown goes to Bose for the first category, the competition, I promise, is far tougher for the next six. So category number two, are the microphones. If you're getting on a phone call with these, you obviously need to have good microphones. All right, so let's start off with an indoor microphone test. These are the Bose QuietComfort Ultra earbuds in a studio environment. And now we can compare these to the Apple AirPods Pro, which you can hear right now. The microphone has always sounded really good. Apple has always been a leader in this space. So I wouldn't be surprised if these perform better in the studio environment. Of course, now we can go outside and try them in a louder environment. But I also want to point out that speaking right now sounds a lot more natural. Uh, the transparency mode is activated when you're talking like in on a phone call and Apple just does it a little bit better than Bose. All right, so now I'm outside and this is what the AirPods Pro sound like. Uh, it's breezy out here. It's a wet road behind me. So we're here in a second as soon as, there you go. So when a car drives by, that's what it's gonna sound like. This is a really tough environment for any microphone. And now for the Bose QuietComfort Ultra earbuds. For my testing before, these did not perform better than the AirPods. They do struggle when there's a lot of background noise. So we're tied one to one. And honestly, both are really solid so far. But what about the audio quality? Well, both have the same SBC and AAC codex for connecting with any device out there, whether that's Apple or Android, but with the Bose Ultra, one of the biggest updates we have compared to the previous model is that this now has Aptex Adaptive, which gives you higher resolution audio if your phone is able to use that. Now, if you have an iPhone, you're, you don't get that, I'm sorry. But if you have like the Nothing Phone 2, for example, you can use that and you're getting more detail and you're getting just better resolution audio. The AirPods, however, do also have something up their sleeve. They have lossless audio coming 
except it's only gonna be with the Apple Vision Pro. So I'm not sure exactly why, and Apple didn't tell me, but for now, we don't have lossless on the AirPods Pro 2. Getting away from the spec sheets and actually talking about the sound, one big drawback with the Bose is that I noticed my pair has some artifacts or some, some static kind of playing through the left earbud when no music is playing. When I start playing music, it goes away, or at least I don't hear it. Now, the AirPods sound quality, Overall, I think a lot of people are familiar with these. There's so many reviews out there. They're balanced, they're clean, like pretty solid bass lines. They have adaptive EQ, which is great because there is no EQ, so you kind of have to rely on what it is. But honestly, I haven't had an issue with that. It's not the most perfect instrument separation. It's not really super analytical if you have noisy songs with a lot of instruments going on. And the cymbals can be slightly de-emphasized, but the wide soundstage feels realistic. And even though AirPods are like, kind of known for not being super bassy, I have to say, they're pretty accurate. They do a pretty good job handling bass lines and they just don't overemphasize the bass. And I think a lot of people want overemphasized bass, whereas their pods are kind of looking to be a jack of all trades. I, I have a Spotify playlist, I'll, I'll link it down below and you guys can see what songs I tested for this. Um, but across the board, like, every song sounded good. Like the AirPods do a really good job. Now Bose on the other hand is definitely more on the bass heavy side. Much like the AirPods, when you put these in, they calibrate to your ears and it, it kind of calibrates based on your ear geometry, which is really cool. And so they can do their own like uh, adaptive EQ to you. And they also have an EQ in the app. So a big benefit of Bose is that there is an app and you can adjust things in there. But again, talking more about the sound itself, Bose definitely presents much more prominent bass by default. And so even if you go into the EQ and you reduce the bass, you're still getting more bass than you would on the AirPods, uh, but it's warmer and more full sounding, I would say, and sometimes even a little bit too warm and a tad muddy. So I ended up lifting the treble to get more details and compensate for the slightly overemphasized bass, but you're getting lots of attack on snares. You're getting a, a really good amount of detail on here as well. And if you like bass, this is undoubtedly going to sound better because it has a bigger sound. It definitely is more like consumer dynamic, I would explain, I would kind of describe it as, where you lift the bass and you lift the trebles a little bit to get more of like a vibrant, lively sound that is, is a little bit more exciting, but less natural as we would see with the AirPods. Okay, so that's what I would consider to be the three pillars of earbuds, the three categories we've covered so far. To be the best, you need to really nail those, but they're all completely worthless without the next ones we're gonna talk about, specifically a good battery life, right? Like, what good is ANC if it dies halfway through your flight? So, the good thing is they both have a pretty solid battery, but Bose does pull ahead winning this one, having six hours in the earbuds and 24 hours when you include the case, and that's obviously with ANC on because you can't turn ANC off. But if you turn on what they call immersive mode, which is like a 360 surround, spatial audio, whatever you wanna call it, it does reduce to four hours in the earbuds and 16 with the case. Fortunately, I don't really use that feature especially often. The AirPods advertise six hours in the earbuds and 30 with the case, but if you have active noise cancellation on, you could probably expect about four and a half hours in the earbuds and 24 with the case. Moving on to category number five, this is where earbuds really differentiate themselves. This is probably what you're going to make your decision based on, uh, depending on what your needs are. And this is the features that the earbuds come with. So the AirPods for one have Find My, and specifically with an iPhone, you can track them down uh, using ultra wideband to find out exactly where they are. You can still find your Bose Buds, but it's gonna be based on like where you last connected, uh, and you don't have a speaker on the case as you do with the AirPods. And a big feature with Bose is that they work well on both iOS and Android devices, as well as laptops and everything else, but the Bose app is available on Android as well as iOS. They both have mono mode, but neither one has multi-point connectivity, which blows my mind. Now, the AirPods do, kind of, only if you have Apple devices. So if you have a Windows laptop and you have an iPhone, you're not switching. But within the Apple ecosystem, one of the updates with the newest AirPods, like I have here, which charge with USB Type-C, is that they do actually switch much more seamlessly between other devices. Now, Bose, again, doesn't have multi-point, but they do have switching within the app, so you can connect to different devices and just go on your app and, and choose which device the Bose Buds are connected to. The controls on the earbuds are also very different. So we have tap and swipe controls on the Bose earbuds, which is a little bit more intuitive for a lot of people. And the swipe is larger because it's a larger earbud, but the pinch and the swipe functions on the AirPods uh, might be a little bit better if you're doing a lot of working out and you're either wearing gloves or your hands are wet or something like that. The force is it's like, you don't have to worry about your hands being wet there. As I mentioned before, they both have like a 360 audio. Spatial audio is what the AirPods call it. Immersion mode is what the Bose earbuds call it. 
I don't really use either one. It's great for media if you're watching a movie or something, but for music, it kind of throws me off and I just, I'm not a big fan of that. The AirPods have adaptive audio, so they kind of personalized volume based on your habits and, and stuff like that. Now Bose has what they call modes, which are very convenient. You can set one for commuting or running or working. Now the AirPods on the other hand are getting a mute gesture for when you're on a phone call and they're getting conversational awareness. I actually already have conversational awareness and I've been using it for the past several days. It's really nice to have that on the newest iOS, you're gonna be seeing that. And so if you're wearing the earbuds and you just start talking, it'll turn the volume down, it'll turn on transparency mode and you can hear yourself. And then whenever you're done talking to whoever you're talking to, it'll gradually bring the volume back up. And the longer the conversation is, the longer it waits before it turns that volume up. If you want to just end it right away and just turn it back up, you just swipe up on the earbud and it does that. So as far as features go, they both have a lot and that's, I can't really give a winner on that. It depends on what you're looking for. But category number six is the design. And this, like there's a lot of stuff that has a clear winner and a clear loser, but it's, it's a big category. So let's just get into it. Starting off with the earbuds cases, you can see Bose has a substantially larger case. Unfortunately, it does not have wireless charging. While the AirPods on the other hand can charge with Qi, they can charge with MagSafe, they can charge uh, on an Apple Watch charger, or they can charge on USB type C. Uh, so I think the clear winner for cases has to be the AirPods. The AirPods are also IP54 water resistant in the buds and in the case, whereas the Bose buds are just IPX4. Now, little disclaimer before talking about the earbud shape, everybody has different ears, the geometry, the fit, the comfort, it's always going to be different. For these, the AirPods stay in like really well and they're very comfortable, but the left ear does fall out for me after a certain amount of time, especially if I'm working out. Whereas the Bose earbuds, it goes a lot longer before I ever have it falling out. And it really it only happens if I'm like running, for example, if I'm sitting still, they don't fall out. And the reason for that is because they also have that little wing tip that is adjustable on the outside. So you have three different ear tips and three different wing tips, whereas the AirPods just come in four different sizes. They both have in-ear detection, but the AirPods have a skin detection, so it's a little bit more accurate. If you set it on the table, it won't just start playing. As far as the aesthetics go, I wanna hold a vote in the comments. So let me know which one you think looks better. Somebody told me that they thought the AirPods looked better because the stem was iconic and they, and they thought it just like, you know, the Apple look, people want that and they think it looks more premium and they just assume that's like the most expensive thing you can buy um, as far as earbuds go. Now the Bose earbuds actually are more expensive. So to anybody who knows earbuds, they'll know you have a more expensive pair of earbuds. These are also metallic on the outside. So that's new with the ultras and they have two different colors, like a creamy white and then a black and kind of silver on the outside. I don't know, which one do you think looks better? Now, perhaps most importantly out of all these categories is number seven, which is the price. I mentioned that bows are more expensive. They're starting out at $299. Of course, as time goes on, they're likely to change their price and I'll have affiliate links in the description below. Uh, so you can see the latest price. The AirPods are $249. They're unlikely to ever change their price, but I'll, I'll put a link below for your convenience. And honestly, summarizing everything here, it's hard to quantify the value of some of these things. Some of these categories I talked about. The AirPods, arguably do more things right. Like they're, they're a jack of all trades pair of earbuds. They're meant for a huge market of people, but the superior active noise canceling power on the Bose earbuds and the added bass capabilities may just make it worth that extra $50 for certain people. For me personally, I tend to prefer the AirPods Pro when I'm working on my MacBook. One, for the seamless switching, and two, because it doesn't have that static sound that we're getting with the Bose earbuds. It's a very unfortunate thing they have, but when I'm traveling, I prefer the Bose QuietComfort Ultra earbuds for their more powerful ANC to give me a more quiet and relaxed environment, for example, on a jet. Since you watched this long, you're probably also going to like this video next. And if you haven't already, please consider clicking the subscribe button. I'll see you over there.